Welcome to the reopening celebration of the BCYF Gallivan Community Center. I am Will Morales. And I am the commissioner of Boston Centers of Youth and Families. And I'm so happy to welcome you today. This center has been closed for a year, but I'm sure you would notice that it was worth the wait. Am I right? This is an exciting day for all the current and future BCYF Gallivan participants. Our community centers are such an integral part of our families' routines, no matter what their ages are. We are all excited to have this center open again. But before I move on, I'd like to take a minute to acknowledge some people who have joined us here today. Newly elect state rep Liz, Mo uh, Liz Miranda. State Rep Dan Colonna is here too as well. Thank you. And BHA couldn't have a finer partner than the BHA Administrator Bill McGonigal, who's also here. And as we sat in the back, he talked about his experience when they first opened the doors here and how much this center has been a part of supporting the work that he does in and around this, this, this uh, facility. I want to thank the BCYF Gallivan staff and members who shipped it uh, to other BCYF community centers during the renovations. Thank you also to our BCF, BCYF operations staff for all the work they put on this project, especially our deputy commissioner, Mike Soprizio. He spent countless hours, give him a hand, <laughs> countless hours watching over all aspects of this renovation. And we are honored that our mayor is here to officially reopen and celebrate this beautiful center. The mayor is committed to making sure that our centers meet the changing needs and populations of our residents. And I can tell you that firsthand, I've seen that commitment. I've been working in the nonprofit world for about 24 years, and most of us know that when we launch a capital campaign, it takes us sometimes 10 years to get the money to do one building. I've been here two and a half years, and I've seen the mayor's commitment to our communities by investing over $20 million into our, into our facilities, redoing three facilities within the time I've been here. So thank you, Mayor Walsh. So in order to introduce Mayor Walsh, I'm gonna ask my friend and my boss, Marty Martinez, to come to the podium, and he's the Chief of Health and Human Services. Your boss, huh? Come on now, come on now. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I know you put a lot of energy into that playground, but we're going to do that again. Good afternoon. Great. Thank you so much for being here and joining us to celebrate this reopening. I'm excited to be here with all of you and all of our volunteers that are here today to thank uh, Kaboom and Morgan Stanley Foundation and the Foundation for BCYF and all our friends and uh, folks who are here today to sort of celebrate with us. This investment, uh, this $3 million investment of upgrades, not only outside and inside, helps to make sure that the community center is not only accessible, um, but it looks good, it feels good, where people want to come in, be engaged, and, and get involved in activities, and really help them take advantage of all the things that are here. It's important to us, as it is important to everyone in the city, that it shouldn't matter what zip code you live in, it shouldn't matter what neighborhood you live in, you should have access to good community services and good community resources. And the Gallivan Community Center is just that. So a round of applause for this center that's here in our community. In our latest capital plan investment uh, plan, we see an allocation of over $50 million for BCYF facilities. So we see updates across the city of these facilities because the administration knows well that it's critically important that our communities have access to the resources they need and so that we can not only take advantage of them but thrive as a community. And so we're excited for that investment and we're excited to be able to do the work together, not only with all of you, but with our BCYF staff and everyone who makes it possible. None of these centers would be possible without our BCYF staff. So let's hear it for our BCYF staff once again.
As we update these centers, we're not just updating centers, but we're also thinking about the impact and the outcomes we want to have in the community, because that's really what it's about. It's not just about what feels good, but it's also about what impact we're trying to make in the community and how we're making sure that we're me reaching those goals and reaching those outcomes. And none of that would be possible without the dedication and commitment of our friend and our leader. And let me introduce and bring him up now, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh. Thank you very much, Marty. And I, I want to thank Marty and his team for doing incredible work. Uh, I want to thank Will Morales and his team. Thank you, Will. Uh, and thank you, for everyone at PCYF, uh, for all the great work you've, you've done. Uh, I want to thank Trisha Lyons and the Public Facilities Department. Uh, Trisha is the leader in, in, in all of our construction in the city of Boston. And I want to thank Trisha and her team. Um, thank you. Uh, everyone from the city side that had anything to do with this, I want to thank you all. I, there's a bunch of street workers here. Thank you for the work you do. Uh, I know Chris Bynes is here and some other folks, so thank you, honestly, for what you do. Uh, I want to thank Kabloom, uh, Morgan Stanley, and the foundation for helping making this playground a reality. So give yourself a, a hand, and everyone around here, give you a hand. Thank you. Um, the elected officials were, were mentioned. Um, the president of the council, Andrea Campbell, uh, who, who uh, who is focused on making sure that our young people have good places to play and hang and be and socialize and connect um, in something that I know that we're both proud of today uh, to see this project move forward because it was invested in the budget. And uh, as Will said earlier, our commitment, um, when I became the mayor, we started talking about building new schools. We started talking about building new, new libraries. We started talking about building new fire stations. And we got plans on all those, so we have a plan now to reconstruct every library in the city over time. Uh, we have a plan to we're work on a plan to reconstruct and build new schools in our city. And, and by the end of this year, that plan should be uh, almost finalized. That it might not all happen in the next couple, few years, but it will happen because we have a system in place. Uh, we did it for libraries, and we did it for fire stations, and, and now we're working on it doing for, for, our, for our kids' centers, PCYF centers because our kids from our neighborhood deserve to play on, a, on good courts, swim in great pools, have great facilities, uh, and that's what today's all about. So thank you, Madam President, for all your support there. Um, Danny Cullinane, um, he worked with me uh, when I was a rep in my office, and he got elected to the State House, and he's been a state representative in this neighborhood for a long time. And, and Danny, too, when, when, when he calls up and oh, we see each other, we talk, it's always about advocacy. Uh, he cares about the kids. He, like the president, have a young, young child. Uh, and those young kids, young people need, need good places to play. Uh, and I want to thank Danny for all his support for the young people of the city, uh, and in particular, the young people of, of this neighborhood, Mattapan and Dorchester, and, and all over the city of Boston for, for the great work they do. So thank you, Danny, for what you've done as well. And the newest addition to the Boston delegation, um, those of you that don't know her, uh, Liz Miranda, who won the other day uh, as a state representative. <laughs> I met her during a basketball tournament that she was running. I was a candidate for mayor, and I went in to a park. And there's a lot of stereotypes that go on in, in places. And when you go into that park, uh, it was in the heart of Roxbury. Uh, there was probably seven, eight hundred people in there. There was kids, there was adults, there was teenagers, there was everybody. Um, and it was a basketball tournament about peace and love. Um, and I've been to that tournament now five consecutive years. And, and Liz ran that tournament. And when she, when she ran for, for rep, uh, she was running to help people. Uh, she wasn't running because she wanted to pass legislation that's going to be earth shattering or, or change the climate and all the things. She's going to do that as a rep. But her heart and soul is about young people and about peace and violence. And she knows it firsthand. The experience, her family has experienced violence firsthand. And having somebody like that in the House of Representatives is going to be a great addition to the Boston delegation and to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So congratulations, Representative, on your, on your victory. <laughs> Most importantly today, thank you to the residents. Thank you for your patience. 
I walked into this center. I was a brand new man. Billy Morgano had me come down five years ago. I walked in, and there was boxes in the door. And I walked in the in the gym, and I'm like, oh boy, uh, this place needs a little love. And and and, and I said, uh, we need to do something here. And, and um, you know, one of the things I, I'm proud of is is the work we do with kids. And I'm like, we got to do something here. So we thought about it, and we put started to make some 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 initial conversations. And uh, three million dollars later, investment made. It's a real investment in this community. Uh, it's an investment, a celebration of the, the past, the present, and the future for our young people. Uh, we wanted this center to make sure that it continues to be a welcoming place, a safe place, an educational place, an inspiring place, and a cool space. And when I say a cool space, I literally mean a cool space for kids to enjoy, and a cool space because there's AC here to make sure that it's, it's warm, it's cool. Um, and, and, you know, this... Th as in every season, this center is going to make sure that it's a place for young people to, to, to grow, to learn, to be safe, uh, to experience great staff here and great coaches here and great mentors here. Um, this is something that is really important for us. This center is part of a $50 million investment in BCYF facilities citywide. Uh, we're working on several investments now. We're working at the, the Mattahunt Community Center. Uh, we're working to, to fix that. As you know, that, that needs a little love, too. Um, obviously, we're working on, aside from BCF, the, the Walker Playground. Mildred Ave Middle School got a brand new kitchen. We're going to have fresh, healthy food in there. Uh, we're making sure that things are happening all over the neighborhood, in this neighborhood. Uh, we're working with, on new housing. Uh, years ago, those of you that are from Mattapan, years ago, I'm um, Dorchester, so I'm right next door. People weren't coming to our neighborhoods. They weren't building buildings, and they weren't making investments. And you fast forward to today, we have in Mattapan, we have Mattapan Square that's, that, that we're doing studies on. We have Cody Ford. We have other opportunities for new housing and new, 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 new opportunities for businesses in the neighborhood. Um, and that doesn't happen by accident. That happens because of the dedicated residents who push and push and push and push and continue to push. And I want to thank you for that. There's a commuter rail stop station near the Neponset Rail Trail Upgrades. Uh, we have historic preservation, uh, the, the, the new farm, that the historic preservation, so it's incredible. Um, all of this stuff happens because of community. All of this happens not because my name's on the wall or, or Andrea or Danny or, or, or any of us. It happens because of, of the quiet leaders that are out there or the leaders out there. Um, and no one modeled that, that, that culture better than Tony did, uh, who was a coordinator at this center. Um, last week, we, we, we celebrated the one-year loss of her life. We're honored to have Tony's family with us today, including uh, her daughter, Dana. Where's Dana? I want to thank you. Son, I mean, sorry. Son, Dana. Where's Dana? It's Dana. I re his son's written here, honestly. Um, but those of you that don't know Tony, um, somebody who cared deeply about this neighborhood, somebody who cared deeply about this center. And when you walk into this facility, there's a community room. And that community room is named after Tony. Um, the reason to do that is to stand on the shoulders of the people that came before us. The reason to do that is to keep her presence alive here for the generation that knows her, but also for the next generation to explain who great people are. And that's what we have to do more of. We have to celebrate the past. We have to celebrate the people who made great things happen in communities. So to the Cromwell family, I want to say thank you. I want to thank you for for your mom, for your family member, to the community of Mattapan, thank you. To everyone here, I want to say thank you. God bless you. God bless this neighborhood. And um, later on today, school gets out. And when school gets out, little ones are going to come running through this neighborhood. And when they get a chance to, some of them probably already snuck inside there, when they get a chance to see what's happened in this little neighborhood right here, a year ago, they came to a neighborhood that didn't look like it cared about them. And one year later, they're coming to a neighborhood that's opening their arms to invite them. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. As you check out the center later, I want you to know that a lot of hard work and many people and many hours went into the renovation. 
under the direction of the Public Facilities Department, which is actually uh, uh, led by my good friend Pat Brophy is in the back. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> There's an individual that stands out by the name of Patricia Lyons. Her staff, her team, everything from the paint color to the flooring to the materials that we used on the tables to the ventilation and the equipment and the computer wiring, we were personally selected by people from the Public Facilities Department working with the architects and contractors and BCYF staff. I'd like to invite Director Patricia Lyons to the podium to say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Mayor Walsh. Thank you for your investment in this obviously well-loved building. As, as Will said, I'm the director of the Public Facilities Department. We're the agency, actually, that didn't do this alone. We partnered with lots of folks across the city, most notably the, the, the staff and, and group from the Boston Centers for Youth and Families. We partnered to give this wonderful building some attention that it so badly needed and so richly deserved. There's been a lot of talk about the mayor's uh, investments all across the city. This $3 million renovation is part of Mayor Walsh's Imagine Boston Capital Plan. Along with community centers like this, the mayor's plan invests in parks and playgrounds and roads and bridges in libraries and schools and fire stations and police stations and fiber optic networks. All of the things that enrich our communities. Through this plan, the mayor is bringing our buildings and our infrastructure into the modern age. But projects like this one are special. Mayor Walsh and all of the rest of us know and understand how important this building is to you. You are the very people, the, the, the people who live in this community are the very people who are going to breathe life into this building and into the programming that the Boston Centers for Youth and Family are going to run here. It's that vision that guided the project that you'll see here today. I hope you see that as you walk through, and I hope you get excited about, the beautifully updated gym, the shiny new computer room, the flexible community room and classroom. And that, as the mayor said, you'll also get to enjoy the new air conditioning system during our next heat wave. As Mayor Walsh reminded us, this building has been a year in the making, and a lot of people had a lot to do with it. But sometimes at the end of projects, they literally need to be pulled to the, to the finish line. And that doesn't happen without people who are completely dedicated and take pride in their work. There are four people in particular that I would like to acknowledge for their outstanding work and long, long hours over the past few weeks. So thank you from our PFD team. I'd like to thank Sean Weir, who's our site, uh, site guy. He has spent weeks here, overtime. Great job. And from BCYF, Mike Sulprizio and Hector Alvarez. Unbelievable. And from our contractor, Billy Kelly from Northern Construction. Thank you, Billy. I'd also like to thank my cabinet chief, the mayor's chief of operations, Pat Brophy, the rest of the team at the Public Facilities Department and the Boston Centers for Youth and Families, our architect, Paul Johnson from Powers and & Company, and also the rest of the team from our contractor at Northern Construction. And finally, but most importantly, I would like to thank our community, all of you, for your patience as we perform this work, and to our neighbors for putting up with all of the noise and the dust that inevitably comes from construction projects. I sincerely hope that you'll find that the wait and inconvenience was well worth it, and that you thoroughly enjoy your new space. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tricia. If uh, you drove or walked here this morning, you just had to get excited and happy about the work being done and the investment being made in this community. 
There are many people from the community who advocated for this project. One of them was Tony Cromwell. Just over a year ago, we lost Tony. The one thing you didn't know about Tony is that Tony was also the administrative coordinator here at one time, many years ago. And Tony did her kind of work in a very special way. She showed up every day loving her job because she knew the families, the youth, and the people that walked through these doors were expecting love in return. And so, with any further ado, I'm going to ask that Dana Cromwell come up and share a few words about his beloved mom. And I'm also proud to say that Dana, as well as one of our Boston street workers, who continues to build this community up and making sure that he keeps his mother's legacy up in, 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 in the light. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. I've been a resident up here for 40 years now, all my life. And um, all I did was watch my mother work, work, work in these neighborhoods, aggravate my friends, ride around, tell them to pull up their pants, all kind of stuff. But that's what we need. And that's what the community lost. You know, we got to get back to those type of things, those type of days, those type of parents. We got to be in everybody's families and everybody's lives to make sure everybody's safe out here. But um, this is a very special day for my community and my family because, like, this is my second home. I live across the street, and I literally grew up in here. And to see everybody come together like this and Kaboom and Morgan Stanley, all the volunteers, it's like the community got to start coming together the same way we built that park. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've been... We've been here since 7.30 in that park, putting all that mulching stuff down over there. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, if we can do those type of things in a few hours, we can put our minds together and really help the city come together all over the place. So, you know, I just want to thank BCYF. Um, Marty, thank you for the kind words. Will, Mike Suprizio, you know, I got to give you a special shout out for bringing that mural, because that mural in the gym that y'all painted over, man, that was our life. <laughs> Like, but, you know, at the end of the day, change is good. There's no problem with a change. You know, I respect it at the end of the day. Um, but um, my mother would have been, you know, really proud of what's going on down here, you know, getting this community center back open. When they told me it was going to close for a year, and I'm like, y'all about to sell my boys on the street, man. Like, they need something to do. But um, it's finally back open, and we're going to make some great changes down here. We're going to make some good work. I'm going to collab with Jose, and he already knows I got his back 100%. He can call on me for anything, you know. So at the end of the day, I'm just going to take my mom's torch, and I'm going to run with it and make sure the community is safe, strong, and make sure these kids are successful at the end of the day because that's really what we need. We have to come together. And a lot of us got organizations that we're doing too many things on our own. Like, we can come together and make things really work out here and make some big things happen. But um, I do want to thank everybody for coming together, making this community look good. Sandy, I thank you. I appreciate you so much. Um, at the end of the day, my sister, that's my sister right here. Stand up, Alicia. That's my sister right there. That's one of Miss Tony's. But um, I'm going to keep this short and sweet, but um, I appreciate everybody here for coming out, doing what they did for this community, because it, it, it really means a ton to me, my family, and everybody that grew up around here. So thank you. That's pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful. Thank you, Dana. Thank you for those words. And I'm, and I'm sure that your mother's not just resting in peace. She rose in peace. And she rose with the love that this community, that her children gave her. And you know what? I strongly believe that she's sitting on a heavenly cloud right now, right, with a perfect view of this day and smiling down upon all of us. So thank you. Thank you, Cromwell family. Thank you, Tony. Um, today, today, as part of the reopening celebration, we are dedicating a new playground. This playground was built in one day thanks to the organizing efforts of Kaboom and the volunteers and financial support of Morgan Stanley Foundation. And it was great to meet a lot of you, Dennis, Jeff, uh, Liliana from Brazil. We had a great talk uh, about being immigrants and coming in here as we were thinking we were putting a, a pretty good picnic bench together. And then we realized it's more complex than whatever it is. But it was great to kind of engage you guys. And it's amazing how sometimes service has a way of connecting people who sometimes might even, not even connect. And it was through this service that we kind of bonded and we were able to do this amazing work. So on behalf of Morgan Stanley, I'm going to ask that Jeff Schwartz come up 
and share a few words uh, with, or there you go, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Schwartz is the Director of Wealth Management and Com Complex, no, Wealth Management and Complex Manager. So Jeff, the podium is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Will and Dana and Alicia. What a great day we had at Yaw Galvin Community Center. Uh, for those that I haven't had a chance to meet, I am Jeff Swartz, the uh, complex manager of the Morgan Stanley Boston High Street office. It is great to be in Mattapan, where both my mother and father were born and raised, uh, just down the street. And my father spent the vast majority of his career uh, just down the street as the, pr as the principal at Dorchester High School. So it's, uh, as, a, as a child, I remember roaming these streets quite well. <clears throat> in just a few hours, we worked together with Kaboom and the team from the Boston Center for Youth and Families to build this bright, cheerful, awesome uh, playground, giving uh, this Mattapan community a fun space for children to play. All of this would not have been possible without all of you, uh, the volunteers at, at Morgan Stanley and Kaboom. I also want to thank Ma <coughs> Mayor Walsh for helping to bring together the, this wonderful renovation. Mayor Walsh, Will took us on a tour earlier today uh, I, can, I can say uh, from, from those of us that were on the tour, the place is awesome. It is first class. The construction of this playground is part of Morgan Stanley's commitment to supporting healthy starts for children uh, in our communities. On behalf of Morgan Stanley's volunteers, over 115 volunteers here today and the, and the many more that were part of this uh, earlier in the, in the process, we thank you for your commitment. We're very proud and grateful to be a part of this project. We hope everybody has a chance to enjoy this community center and the playground. Thank you for an amazing day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.